Good afternoon and welcome to West Coast Model Battleships. I'm your host Dave. I'll be behind the camera today. We're going to be doing a inbox review of the 1350 Hobby Boss USS Alaska CB1. It was a class of ship that was designed in the late World War II, saw limited actions and was not utilized after the war or never refitted, which was a shame. So We'll start off with the box and the box art. So here's the box. Give it a little tilt up there. This is the box art. Not as a, I would say detailed as Tamaya's, but uh, definitely worth it. So we'll get inside the meats of this thing. I've already taken everything out of the bag in here to help save some time and move along here so it doesn't bore you to death. But we'll get inside. Okay, inside we have our instructions, 40 pages, well detailed instructions, and since the kit does come with some photo etch, it tells you when and where to actually put the photo etch as you're building along, which I would probably kind of change a little bit towards the end especially railings and stuff like that. Nice little, pretty detailed. Looks like a lot of the seams have been hidden, unlike uh, some of the Tamiya kits where you've got to fill, especially on the, the Iowa class builds. There's a lot of seams you got to try to hide. Um, got a new pointer I'm going to try out today. So I was going to try to show you, here's where they're Showing you. Oh, wait, what do we got here? Oh, old two tusk, Charlie Mack. Happy New Year to you, brother. So, as you can see here, they talk about putting in some of the railings uh, as you're building the, the sub assemblies up. You can do that, you just gotta be real careful. So, there we go. Happy New Year, old Charlie. Two tusk, prosperous new, new Year to you. Okay. So, here's your instruction booklet. And it also comes with a paint guide on what she looked like in the, I believe it was 44, I think she was painted again in 45 into, a, I think it was MS-22, which is similar to the, um, oh, uh, the Missouri, North Carolina, all those received it. Um, nothing on the back. Talks about the shows the planes, the two float planes, the OS2s, and the design. I'm going to try to do this design. I, it's kind of difficult because you got to tape everything and paint. All right, let's get into the frets. Well, first, let's do the hull. I'm going to move this box, and I want to show you a comparison here of the two hulls. It is a one-piece hull. Which is nice. And hopefully you can, we'll get this together for you. Okay, this is an Iowa class hall. Here is the Alaska class. And if you are interested, 30 and a quarter inches long for an Iowa class 1350. And we are going 27 and 3 eighths for the Alaska. The beam on this is 3 and 5 eighths. And this one is 3 and a cool, oh wait, 3 eighths. So basically, she fits inside an Iowa class hull. There's your difference between the two. This one's uh, kind of beat up. It's a parts queen. This one also has four screws, one rudder with a double built rudder. One turns, one turns inside it too. Neat, unique design. This is the transom stern on these right here. Instead of the, the flared or the 
nice pointed one towards the end there. The first ship that had the transit rear ends. Um, comparing it to a Tamiya kit, this one has got a different sheen instead of real shiny. Um, it's more of a kind of dull and it's got a little bit of texture to it. They did include some of the armor plating lines on here. Across here, I definitely would I would scribe your lines across the hull to give it a little more realism, forward and aft, to give it that nice look of uh, being welded. It was a welded ship. Armor plates on both sides, good crisp detail. There's a small line right here, which doesn't seem to be protruding, and you will have to glue the skegs on the side of this one, on both sides, whereas. The Iowa class already has it. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Get the hole out of the way for you. All right, we're going to dive down. I'll get a little closer so you can see the frets up closer. And uh, we'll be right back. Okay, we are back. We've got the two, first two pieces for you. This is a two-piece deck. Um, good crisp detail on it. There are some molded on shields that would uh, you may have to be removed according to the instructions for a, a deck, a laminated deck, which I do have the detail set for this. I will be doing a review on that one for you. But there's good detail on here. Good lines for sturdiness on the sub-assemblies. The deck is a little wobbly. I would think about maybe reinforcing the bottom a little bit just to give it that strength. And then definitely putting these together, I would reinforce underneath this seam line both this way and th this way and maybe one across there. Because they are a little flimsy. But they are thick, which is nice. Put this out. Oops. Sorry about that. Big elbows. Okay. Go with the first two frets. So we have our main superstructures and some sub assemblies to go off of. Take a look at these. There's some nice detail there. Some hatches. I would definitely draw out the portholes on this. Add some foil etch there. Not a lot of flash. I do like that the, they have attached these to the bottom instead of the being on the side where you got to try to either smooth it out or fill it. And it goes for the same for the forward superstructure where the number two turret is. They have the molded on. They have the molded on hatches. Molded on fire hoses. Underneath, they do show supports, which is kind of nice. Good detail. Not a lot of, not a lot of flash. Don't see it on this one. Well, that's that one. This is part of your superstructure. As you can see, this is your flag basin, where your flag or halyards come out. There. So there is some molded on detail. Once again, these are done on the bottom, which is nice. Not bad. Okay, let's get into some of the meat and potatoes. This is, looks like the aft section of the ship. And good detail there, attached to the bottom. Um, lots of tiny little hatches here. If you have a, a photo etch set with hatches, they do come with some small ones, which helps. Small, tiny portholes here. Probably used to be drilled out. Definitely give it some 3D character. So, that's that one. And these two frets are identical. Looks like we have for you. You get your boats, some antennas, miscellaneous deck items, 
Um, here's the props. There's two four-bladed props. And this is more. There's some from your uh, radar. Some really smaller parts. They almost look like shells right here, but it looks like more like gas canisters. And then we get back into this bit of being attached on the side. So you're gonna have to do some extra cleaning on that. Not bad. Here's one of your gun directors on the very end. That one's done on the bottom. The rest of these are done on the sides where we have to do the extra cleaning on those two frets. So that brings us up to a total of five. Here's number six. Get that out of my way. So here we have looks like the main funnel and part of your superstructures. Here are your struts for your shafts and they do they are hollowed out so you can put brass or other type of rod in there. I would prefer brass painted silver because they don't use brass on propeller shafts because it's too soft of a metal. Yard arms more of the superstructure good crisp detail they even include on the bottom side your supports which is kind of nice you don't have to add those you can definitely highlight them to bring them out here's the rudder that I was talking about so this one turned and there's another one that goes right here that also turns it acts as a double rudder kind of a unique design for being in the 40s okay up okay looks like we have some gun tubs uh, here's the bow break that's nice looks pretty crisp more gun tubs looks like some gun tubs here too small section of superstructure of course the nameplate USS Alaska Not bad. I don't see a lot of flash on these at all. There is some nubs that you will have to take off right there. Not bad. Not bad at all. Here's the other one. So this one has splinter shield, searchlights, tops to the antennas these are your skegs that go along the side that you will have to mount that is the first time I've ever seen that on a ship like this once again very little to no flash on these um, there's a couple that these are going to have to be delicately cut because you got a spot, spot in the middle if it is not used it doesn't look like it definitely use caution on that trying to nip those little pieces out this is thin I mean overall it looks very nice okay let's get to the big ones these ones come wrapped really nice and for a ship that has just three main turrets we'll get this in cut so we can get this open each one of these is wrapped I will do it the easy way. Okay. So, let's get that off. Get that off. Got a little tape. Okay, get that out of here. So we have one main gun, and then these are your 20 millimeters, part of your 40 millimeters. I would probably go with a, a better models um, 40 millimeter set, or even Shipways now has 40 millimeter complete quad bore fours that you can buy. I believe it's $18 a s for a set of four. 
There's your barrels, your plastic barrels, your 5 inch barrels. Looks like hose pipes, the bottom of the turret. And then here's the 5 inch gun. This is the first time I've seen this on a nice kit. Tamayas, you have to glue the sides on each one of these. This is completely molded and it's on the bottom. And it has the, the little rings that go around it and the top, which is very nice. You will have to remove the, the molded on ladders right here to make it uh, put the photo etch on there. But there is no seams as you would get in the Tamaya one. The Tamaya ones are a pain in the rear to get all of that out. The back side has all the hatches and the little ladders that you'll have to put on if you want to detail it up. If not, it's already molded on for you. But the funny thing I thought was, so here's two of the same frets. And she only has three main guns, but I understand why they do it. You get a set of two more for a total of six main guns. Here's your six five inch guns between the three. And then all your 40 and 20 millimeter guns that were placed aboard her during her time because they used them as an anti-aircraft platform during World War II. Same thing. Recommend getting photo etch or resin. Life rafts look a lot easier. And there's the barrels for the 40 inch. Back there. Good, good clean detail on all this. I haven't seen a lot of flash yet on it, which is good. So those are that. Okay, let's get to the... There's a small bag that comes with this, of some parts, probably for an upgrade after that she was completed. There may have been some add-ons that were put in there. Got that. Here's the planes, molded in clear as usual. Very crisp detail. Nice. Oh, there's a little flash on the propeller there. Not much. And this one has the same spot, so it must be a little bad spot in the mold. Clear as, you, as usual to come with. You also get your set of decals. Jack staff in the front, American flag in the back. Plain decals. And it also has a bag of 1350 anchor chain. Definitely will need some primer and paint on those. And on top of that, the kit, I was surprised to see it. I didn't know it didn't come with it, but it comes with four frets of photo etch. And it's Hobby Boss's own photo etch, not an aftermarket one. Let's see if I can get this open, pull one of these out, see the detail on it. So, it's really smooth, I can feel a lot of, uh, oh, it's got plastic over it. So it's got a plastic protectant even over it after you take it out of the bag. The cranes are there, nice clean lines, good detail, little extras even in the vent holes right here. Um, seems to be a little thicker than some of them, which is nice. So there's four sets. Um, here's for the two cranes, the catapults, float bags, rafts, and then this one is more of your railing and part of the, the, the strut structure that goes up on the funnel of these ships. Good railing. Uh, looks like single triple and even quad or four rail quadruple rail railing here's some more your main ones on there comes with triple 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 and quadruple and it also has the small steps that fold and then you have to put the little push the little steps through say so I do have the details upset so I will be in using both sets of these so that's my review of this thing. It looks very nice. We'll see how the fit goes along as you see the updates as I start when I start this thing. 
Um, I'll tell you about the fit problems or anything like that, but like I say, I, I see very little flash. Actually, I see some, a little bit on this. Ooh, that one's actually damaged. Yep. So, watch out for that, it comes damaged. Right behind my finger there, both sides. Yep. That's probably why they give you so many. Um, the photo etch set does come with a, a plate to go on top to give it more detail. Uh, lines and so forth. Um, I had a little problem with those fitting on the Carolina kit so I would be checking these before you put them on to make sure they fit properly so you don't sit there and file them. So that's it. I think that'll do about it. Uh, I'm going to say four sets of these. Get these out of the way. And I believe it was eight fret. Or one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen sprues, two for the aircraft, and one small bag for that. With some parts in there. And two pieces for the deck. There you go. So, as soon as I uh, get done with the Carolina, and you know who's still working on is Arizona, maybe I'll start in on this one. Got a couple other things I'd like to add for my, uh, my kick kit bash collection. I like to do an F-14. It's one of my favorite planes in the world. I grew up around them with Top Gun being here in San Diego. You saw them all the time. That'd be really cool. I like to also do a, uh, a um, Arlick Burklax destroyer. Um, there's actually one with my last name on it named after an admiral. I'd like to do that one. It's a Flight 2A configuration on the Arlick Burklax. So, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you have any questions, comments, please ask away. I'll be glad to get back to you on them. What I find, what I see good with the kit, what I don't see good with the kit. Um, when I start doing the updates on it, I'll definitely be throwing out if there is any fit problems or when we go to put the deck on if stuff like this is going to interfere. And for Charlie, that's the best pointer in the world, brother. Hope you have a prosperous new year. A uh, little shout out to uh, Brian over at BAS. Um, lost a family member uh, today, a little four-legged one. My condolences to you and your wife. I know what it's like to lose a little fur baby. And my wishes to you. All right, that's it. That is the review of the USS Alaska 1350 scale from Hobby Boss. Hope you enjoy it. If you like, leave a subscribe. Want a shop card? Please send an email. I'll get one in the mail to you. Take care.